In our headlines for this evening, locally $10 million to jumpstart capital projects in Nevis and Nevis Water Department implements water rationing following fire at pumping station. The details are straight ahead. Good evening and welcome to the Nevis Newscast for today, Wednesday, May 6th, 2015. I am your presenter, Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. A number of capital projects in Nevis will be jump-started after the transfer of 10 million EC dollars in budgetary support from the federal government to the Nevis Island Administration. Permanent Secretary in the NIA's Ministry of Finance, Colin Doerr, says allocations have already been made to disburse the funds across multiple sectors including health, tourism, education, and public infrastructure. The first project earmarked for funding is the upgrade of the Alexandra Hospital. Door indicates that the agenda developed in 2013 includes the construction of a new laboratory. He added that a groundbreaking should be held sometime soon and that the NIA is in the final stages of planning and out of the $10 million, the NIA has allocated approximately $2.5 million Funds have also been allocated to support the Nevis Water Supply Enhancement Project, the Handerswood Rehabilitation Project in Gingerland, the Bath Stream Development Project, the Pitters Beach Recreation and Public Park Project, and the Hot Meals Program, as well as the refurbishment of several public buildings, including Government House. He says the NIA is basically using the $10 million to fund the capital side of its budget and believes that once it funds that side, it creates an avenue that can stimulate further growth and development and benefit the people of Nevis. The finance official said he expects work to be in full swing on a number of these projects by September of 2015. The Nevis Water Department is currently experiencing technical difficulties due to an electrical fire at the Fothergills pumping station in Gingerland. According to manager of the Nevis Water Department, Roger Hanley, the incident affected the ability to pump water from the station for approximately nine hours, therefore interrupting the delivery of water to the Stony Hill storage facility. We have started the water rationing um, during the time period of 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. at mornings. Um, the importance of this exercise is to facilitate persons living in the higher areas um, to have an adequate supply of water uh, at mornings. Um, the reasons for doing this is the, it's due to the fact that we uh, were unable to pump for nine hours on that particular day on the 26th. Uh, basically what happens, um, the consumers were still um, using the water supply. Um, so what we have happening now, um, we're actually trying to rebuild the storage that we would have had prior to the incident. The areas that are currently being affected are Rollins, Pond Hill, Clegot, Chickenstone, Cox, Braziers, Brown Hill, Upper Church Ground, Cherry Garden and Quadrock Road. Handley urged the general public to reduce the use of water as much as possible until this difficulty is rectified. Meanwhile, Handley says consumers in the northern part of the island are also experiencing difficulties due to a power failure. For those persons who are living in that um, portion of, of, the, uh, of the network, uh, we actually suffered a, a power failure from the um, electrical grid. Um, it would have been sometime um, l uh, last week and the power was off for three hours. Um, normally when that happens, uh, again we tend to lose that uh, storage that we, we have. And 
again we are trying to play catch up with the, the water supply. The areas being affected by this power failure are Jones Estate, Clifton Estate and the Kids Bay area. The water service in those areas will be interrupted from 9.30 p.m. to 4.30 a.m. In reference to the ongoing Caribbean Development Bank Nevis Water Supply Enhancement Project, Hadley says his department is hoping to eliminate the discrepancies involved with the network to ensure smooth operation of all of its facilities. Several key officers in the government of St. Kitts and Nevis stand to benefit from the knowledge and experience of His Excellency Olaf Taribail during a protocol training session this week. At yesterday's opening, Ambassador Taribail, who is attached to the Maltese Diplomatic Service and serves as Private Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, mentioned the upcoming Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting slated for Malta in November 2015, noting that there will be a series of pre-meetings, especially for foreign affairs ministers, to discuss related matters. The preparation of such a high-profile event is just one of the many topics which will be discussed in the coming days. These and other topics on the agenda will provide the golden opportunity to learn more about diplomatic protocol and etiquette, Ambassador Tarabile said. Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Mark Brantley, advised participants to make use of the training for personal and national development, saying that in today's global climate, there is an increase in demand for persons versed in protocol and etiquette, as having protocol expertise makes any exchange more successful and profitable. Minister Brantley said he is particularly heartened as a parliamentary representative in the federal government and a minister in the Nevis Island administration that he could welcome to the workshop officers of the Premier's Ministry and NIA representatives. He said he is convinced that in the participants' interactions and deliberations on issues of protocol, they will also display the inherent spirit of fraternity and camaraderie, which a shared heritage and ancestry has bequeathed them. Workshop participants are also expected to discuss the diplomat as an event organizer, organization of official visits, and national anthems, among other matters. Coming up after the break, Climber to raise money for Nevis Historical and Conservation Society. Stay tuned. Welcome back. The 2015 Booby Island Regatta and Sailing Festival comes up this weekend and the Nevis Tourism Authority is describing it as something good that has been added to the NTA's calendar of events. The 8th Booby Island Regatta and Sailing Festival is something that the NTA welcomes and is another event that it can support and use for the promotion of Nevis, says CEO of the Nevis Tourism Authority, Greg Phillip. It's just like the other events that are usually here on the island, the, the triathlon, the swim, the marathon, what we do is we use these events by providing support um, through journalistic um, coverage, also through um, promotional efforts that we use generally basically on our website through our social media channels to really use those as vehicles to promote the island and also ensure that we give them support in a way that says that next year they'll be bigger and better because more people will know about it, more people will come to the island at that time of year to participate. The bigger the, the crowd at these events, the better it really is for Nevis because it adds texture, as I mentioned, to the, the general experience of people who are traveling these days. And a lot of travelers these days, they're not just traveling for rest and relaxation. They want to experience different things in different destinations. And the more events that we have of such like, the better it is for us here on the island of Nevis. The Booby Island Regatta and a Sailing Festival, which traditionally was a short race around the island, has expanded to become an event that now includes three separate activities, which will take place from Friday 8th to Sunday 10th May. The first one is um, the Chase the Monkey, which is really a race across the channel that goes from 
um, essentially Christoph Haber and comes over to Nevis. And then on the second day there's Round Rock, which essentially is a race that goes all the way around Nevis. And it sounds short, but it's really not short. Um, it's likely to take up to six hours. Um, we'll basically begin at Paradise Beach, go all the way around and end um, here at Befront in Charlestown. So a lot of opportunities for people who want to actually see it. And then on the 10th, it's the traditional race, the one that is just the very short sort of chase around Booby Island. Um, that, that in itself should be something good. Um, the party is right after that down in the Orly area. So it's, it's something else good that we can say is now added to the calendar of, of Nevis at a good time of year when things um, are somewhat beginning to slow down and we really need events now added to the calendar to really assist um, to build our tourism product. Events like these, says Philip, add to the excellent experiences that Nevis is trying to provide for people who travel to the island and are looking for different things to do. It's not a serious, serious event. It's a fun event. Um, so if there are people in the general public who have um, sailing boats and they want to enter, I'm pretty sure they can. They can contact um, Miles Dean over at the Nevis Yacht Club or they can also just come out and participate by watching. It's these are these are races that are happening right off the coast of Nevis. So if you have a boat and you want to follow the race, you can. Or you can stay on shore and, and look at the race. Um as I said, the one that goes around Nevis really starts at Paradise Beach, sail all the way around Nevis, will take likely six hours or so and finishes right here um, at the Bayfront in Charleston. So excellent opportunity for people to really um, view that and see it. And then the other one on the last day, all the action takes place over at Orly. So again, excellent vantage point and a nice area to interact and just have a relaxing Sunday. Interested persons can visit www.boobyislandregatta.com to find out more about the events or complete a form to enter a yacht. The organizing authority is Starboard Bearing Limited, affiliated with the Nevis Yacht Club. Quentin Henderson, popularly known as the B-Man, has set himself another challenge that will raise money for the Nevis Historical and Conservation Society. This week, within three days of each other, he is to climb both the 3,232 feet Nevis Peak and the 4,409 feet Ben Nevis in Scotland. He climbed Nevis Peak today, Wednesday, May 6th, and will climb Ben Nevis in Scotland. Scotland on a Friday, May 8th. Henderson is flying overnight from Nevis to London and is expected to travel by train from Gatwick to Fort William tomorrow, Thursday, May 7th, to make his ascent of Ben Nevis, the highest mountain in the British Isles, on Friday, May 8th. Henderson, originally from Edinburgh, was today featured on the front page of the UK Herald and in the Herald Scotland. The article notes that Henderson was inspired to do the trip by his encounter with the Queen's Baton Relay after it reached St. Kitts and Nevis in the run-up to Glasgow 2014. The idea is to raise money and publicity for St. Kitts and Nevis by climbing Ben and Nevis with the mud of Nevis Peak on the calves of his legs and planting a division flag on the Scottish mountain so it appears like a seamless climb, Henderson explains. Henderson, who has lived on the island for 28 years, is expected to raise in excess of 5,000 US dollars for the Nevis Historical and Conservation Society. Today, the Ministry of Tourism said it wishes Quentin Henderson the best of luck on his charity hike and looks forward to seeing the national flag of St. Kitts and Nevis flying high upon Ben Nevis. That's it for tonight's edition of the Nevis Newscast. Thank you for viewing. Good night.